Ginga Monera. As we know, there are different types of organisms living on this planet. These living organisms are quite enormous in number and highly diversified in their characters. For better approach, living organisms have been classified into different groups by different workers. Carl Linnaeus, known as the father of classification, classified organisms into two kingdom systems, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. But this system had a number of demerits. Subsequently, R. H. Whitaker, an American taxonomist in 1969 proposed the five kingdom classification and divided the living world into five kingdoms Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Whitaker's five kingdom system is based on five factors complexity of cell structure complexity of an organism's body, mode of nutrition, lifestyles, and phylogenetic relationships. Let's understand these five factors one by one. The first factor is the complexity of cell structure. On the basis of the nucleus and other characteristics, two types of cells are recognized. The first type is a simple primitive cell known as prokaryotic cell as in the case of bacteria and algae. The second type of cell is a eukaryotic cell which has a complex structure and is found in fungi, plants and animalia. The second factor is the complexity of an organism's body. The earliest organisms were unicellular, later on Complex eukaryotic forms evolved and in due course of time they evolved into multicellular organisms. The third factor is the mode of nutrition. There are two modes of nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. The process by which organisms synthesize their own food is known as autotrophic nutrition. For example, plants and certain bacteria. In heterotrophic nutrition, organisms depend on other organisms or plants for their food. Heterotrophic nutrition is of three main types, holozoic, saprophytic and parasitic. Holozoic mode of nutrition refers to the intake of solid food and breaking it into a simple form. In case of saprophytic nutrition, organisms obtain their food from dead and decaying organic matter, while in case of parasitic nutrition, organisms depend partially or completely on other organisms for their food, causing damage to the host organisms. The fourth factor that was considered while making this five kingdom system is the lifestyle. On the basis of the lifestyles, organisms have been put into three groups. The first group is that of producers. Plants which utilize light energy, water and carbon dioxide to synthesize their organic food are producers. The second group based on lifestyles is that of consumers which are animals that consume either plants or other animals to survive. The third group is that of decomposers such as bacteria and fungi which depend on the dead remains of plants and animals for their food and decompose them. The last and the fifth factor is the phylogenetic relationship. Phylogeny is the evolutionary history of organisms and an index of true relationship among organisms. All kingdoms are arranged to show the probable phylogenetic relationships among them based on fossils and other evidences. Such arrangement allows us to visualize an increase of complexity with evolutionary time.
Let's look at each kingdom one by one. The first kingdom is Monera, which represents the earliest group of organisms. They are the most numerous of all organisms with a single drop of water, estimated to contain 50 billion bacteria. Monarins are unicellular, microscopic prokaryotic organisms such as bacteria. These organisms usually live in a moist environment and are found in hot springs, under ice, in deep ocean floors, deserts, as well as within the bodies of animals and plants. Being prokaryotes, monorins lack a definite nucleus, but the nuclear material consists of a coiled naked strand of DNA which is not enclosed in the nuclear membrane. Some monorins show autotrophic nutrition and some show heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic monorins can produce their nutrients either by photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. For example, cyanobacteria are photosynthetic bacteria and nitrosomonis, a nitrifying bacteria, is a chemosynthetic bacteria. Heterotrophic monorins exhibit different modes of nutrition. Some are saprophytes, that is, they obtain their nutrients by breaking down complex organic compounds from dead and decaying matter and are also known as decomposers. Some are parasitic, that is, they live on other living organisms, causing them damage. Rickettsia and Chlamydia are parasites found in eukaryotic cells. Monorins move with the help of flagella or by axial filaments or by secreting slime. Flagella sweep in a propeller-like motion to help the bacteria move. The axial filaments cause the cell to rotate and move like a corkscrew. When bacteria move by secreting slime, they glide along surfaces. Most monorins reproduce asexually through binary fission, where the DNA duplicates and each daughter cell receives one molecule of the DNA, and thus they're genetically identical. Binary fission does not allow genetic diversity, which is needed for the bacteria to withstand the changing environment. Bacteria reproduce sexually by the process of conjugation. During this process, two bacteria attach to each other with the help of a pilus and the DNA material is transferred from one bacterium to another, giving a scope to genetic diversity. Organisms in Kingdom Monera do have some means of defense. In some species of bacteria, there is a capsule made of polysaccharide peptidoglycan which covers the cell and protects the bacterium from phagocytosis by white blood cell or from desiccation. When living conditions become too harsh, bacteria develop a high resistant and dormant wall around their DNA and a bit of cytoplasm called the endospore. The endospore may resist up to years of freezing as well as drought. The rest of the cell that has not been covered by the endospore dies. When the conditions become suitable for the bacteria to become active again, the endospore becomes an active cell. The cyanobacteria form resistant spores called achenides that is, in large cells around which a thickened outer wall develops. Monorins are divided into three major groups, eubacteria, archaebacteria, and cyanobacteria. Subkingdom archaebacteria includes primitive anaerobic bacteria that live in conditions such as high temperatures, acidic pH, absence of oxygen, which are too harsh for other living organisms. The subkingdom Archaebacteria includes methanogens, halophiles and extreme thermophiles. 
methanogens produce methane gas and live in swamps, sewage, animal gut or other anaerobic habitats. Halophiles are salt lovers. They live in high salinity habitats, brackish ponds, salt lakes and near seafloor volcanic vents. Extreme thermophiles are heat lovers that live in hot springs, acidic soil and near hydrothermal vents where temperature is usually 2500 degrees Celsius. Subkingdom Eubacteria includes typical bacteria that exist today. Cyanobacteria are blue-green algae which contain chlorophyll and other pigments and are aquatic in nature. They were a part of Kingdom Plantae earlier, but because they're prokaryotes, they were placed in Kingdom Monera. Monerans are important to us in many ways. On contrary to the popular belief that most bacteria are harmful and cause diseases, they're actually quite the opposite. They're helpful to us in many ways. Bacteria enrich soil. For example, nitrogen fixers convert nitrogen gas into nitrate that plants need to survive. Monarins also play a very important role in the production of cheese, yogurt and vinegar. Bacteria are used in the production of antibiotics such as streptomycin. They also help cattle digest tough cellulose present in the grass. Methanogens are used in sewage treatment plants to convert sludge into methane gas. Archaebacteria support ecosystem in high temperature habitats because many organisms use them as a food resource.